When working out in the woods, you need to have a good source of drinking water. Most people bring their own water, bring a jug of water, water bottles. But what if you're going to be out in the woods for days at a time, like I am, a lot of the time? You could just bring a lot of water, but I like to find a source out in the woods where I am. One of my favorite places to get water is somewhere like this. A cold, clear mountain stream or spring, like this one. We're not far from its underground source. There's no development upstream in this watershed. No houses, no livestock, no septic systems. I used to drink straight out of this creek. It's cold, clean, delicious water. Some of the best tasting water I've ever had comes out of a creek or spring. At my family's ranch where I made some videos a few weeks ago, we've been drinking out of those streams for generations. We are selective in where we'll get a drink if we know they're going to be cows upstream. We're probably not going to drink below that, but that's always been our source of water out there, the cold, clear mountain streams. My family's been drinking out of those streams for over 150 years, and look at us. We were all born into the idea we could drink right out of the creeks. But people tell me I shouldn't be doing that. They say they have bad bugs in them. Well, what if I just drink around the bugs? They say, no, you can't do that. You're going to get E. coli. You're going to get dysentery or salmonella, H. pylori, cryptosporidium, beaver fever, pinworms. I don't want beaver fever. I don't want pinworms. They say if I get some of these bugs, I'm going to have to go see the doctor. I don't want to have to go see the doctor. With all this talk about these bad bugs, they're taking away one of the joys of life. Walking up to one of these cold, clear mountain streams, kneeling down and getting a drink. Then I will say something like, people have been drinking out of streams for thousands of years before they ever invented water filters or filtration chemicals. Then they usually say something like, yeah, but life expectancy is much longer now. People used to not live as long back then. I'm all for logic and reason, but I never liked it so much when people use it to argue against me. Well, a few years ago, I bought a Berkey filter to have up here where the sawmill is. That way I can take the good creek water, pour it in the top canister, gravity pulls it down through the filters where it collects the filtered water in the bottom canister. When you want a drink or some filtered water, turn on the tap, good, clean, filtered water. That works good in a place like this where it can be stationary, where it can be indoors, where it'll be protected, not gonna be moving around. But this summer, I'm probably gonna be spending more time in places where there wouldn't be a good place to put that. At least not somewhere where the bears aren't going to get to it, knock it over and destroy it. They would totally do that. When a company contacted me, asked me if I'd be willing to test out this water filter, I thought this could be useful for some of the places I'll probably be this summer. It's about the size of a toaster. Looks a little bit like one too, the way the handle's made. It's a portable reverse osmosis water filter. Charges with a USB cable. We're gonna try it out. Instead of taking it down to the creek and filtering water that's already clean where I probably won't know the difference, there are some mud puddles over here. We'll try it on that. First, gotta set it up. It comes with two filter cartridges, which go in there. The instructions say take the wrapper off of them before you put them in. That was nice of them to remind us of that. It has the hybrid filter and the reverse osmosis filter. They're both different so you get the right one in the right slot. Hybrid filter goes in the hybrid filter slot. You have to press down. Then it has a wrench to tighten them up. Didn't really need that. Reverse osmosis filter goes in the reverse osmosis slot. They both lock in tight. Comes with a long intake hose. So you can throw that into the river, the lake, the sewer treatment plant, whatever you want to throw it into. Maybe not the sewer treatment plant. The outlet hoses clip in right here. They clip in right here. Now this 
part right here is a janky setup. It's not easy to clip in there. I guess you just have to get rough with it to get it in there. Once it's in, it's secure. I think that's it. Let's go try to filter some water. Here's a puddle with some stagnant water in it. But it has a big blob of turkey poo in it. A big blob. I was going to drink the water that it filtered. It's supposed to be able to take anything bad like that out of it. Shouldn't be a problem. But that big blob weirds me out too much. Let's go down to the next one. These are some stagnant water puddles. They have a little color to them, a little bit muddy. A few days ago, there were some geese up here dabbling around in some of the puddles. I don't see any big blobs though. We'll set up over here, see if this thing will clean up goosey mud puddle water. Intake goes in the puddle. Has some kind of rattly things inside. I don't know if that's some kind of filter or probably just wait to hold it underwater. The hose with the white deal on the end is for drinking water. The one without it is for non-drinking water. It says the first time you use it or the first time after you change a filter cartridge, let it run for 10 minutes. It does a self-cleaning process. Turn it on, let it run for 10 minutes. Hold the button down until it comes on. There it goes. Starting to spit water out the other ends. We'll let that run for 10 minutes, then we'll fill up the jars. 10 minutes later, I put the hoses in the jars. Yes, I did have a microphone malfunction. Yes, I am doing a voiceover at this point. Hopefully you can't tell. You probably can though. I always sound different on the voiceovers. This has been running for about five minutes. We'll turn it off, see what we came up with. In five minutes, we ended up with about a half quart, a little more than a half quart of what looks like really clear water. Doesn't smell funny. And almost a quart of cloudy water. This is the semi-filtered water. This is not to drink. This can be used for wash water, showers, dishes. It's fairly cloudy, but it did come out of a goosey mud puddle. Now for the ultimate test. Tastes like water. It's cold, it's tasty, tastes a little bit like jar. Mm. But it's good water. Looks really clear. That one not so much. That's how well it works in the goosey mud puddle water. I'm gonna try it in the creek where it's clean water, see if it filters faster that way. Dump these jars out. That's good water. I'm going to drink that. Turn it on. Let it run for 30 seconds. While it's doing that, see if I can finish this water. 30 seconds later, we'll put the hoses in the jars. That was about five minutes. We'll turn it off. Looks like about the same amount of partly filtered water and maybe two thirds of the amount we got before of the clean water. It actually went slower this time. Maybe the goosey mud puddle water plugged up the filter some. Water tastes just the same. It's good water and supposedly no bugs. I don't have to drink around the bugs. The partly filtered water is a little bit cloudy, which is probably residue that came from the first test. I noticed on the creek test, there was a little bit more of an elevation gain between the source and the filter. Also, the connection on the suction side may have come a little bit loose. Either or both of those may have contributed to a lower flow. I decided to redo the test after tightening the connection. Whatever was different, it caused a much 
better flow. It only took about three minutes before the drinking jar started overflowing. I also noticed the cloudiness in the non-drinking water is just air bubbles. After a short time, they went away. When you're done using this toaster looking thing, turn it on without any water intake to purge all the water out of it. Remove the cartridges. After these are taken out of the wrapper and used, you can store them up to six months and reuse them. They say it filters out lake water, pond water, river water, pool water, sewage, sweat, even urine. Maybe I would have been okay with the turkey poo water. Still didn't want to do it. It's recommended for outdoor use, for emergencies. If a disaster happens, you lose your drinking water. You can make good clean water even out of the unthinkable. I'm thinking this would be good to put under the back seat of my truck when I'm traveling around in remote places. Not that truck, it doesn't have a back seat. The other truck does not yet filter out seawater, ocean water. It'll filter out some salt, but ocean water's too much. They say maybe one day they'll have a filter cartridge that will filter out that. Filter out that. Filter that out. Yeah. I know someone who has a well with some really bad iron water in it. They can only use it for irrigation. I want to see if this thing will take that iron out. Supposedly it can take out metals, heavy metals. My neighbor has a sulfur well. I want to see if it takes that out too. The cost for one of these, which includes the cartridges and everything you need, is $249 as of right now. Full disclosure, I did not have to buy this. They sent this to me. They also sent me a link with a discount code I will put in the description. With the discount code, it's considerably less than that to have the ability to quickly and easily turn nasty water into good drinking water, even turkey poo water. While you're checking that out, I'm gonna go over there and go do something.